Hello, man, cells. What's going on? It's Andrew or Scottish Key here, and today we have the Marvel Universe uh, variant Play Arts Kai action figure designed by Hitoshi Kondo, Spider Man. So, this is the Spider Man variant figure from Play Arts Kai. You can see the uh, really cool art there. It's a very glossy box. On the left, it says Play Arts Kai Spider Man. On the back, we have a bunch of warranty information in uh, Japanese, I believe. And we have. Uh, World variants, player it's Kai, blah, blah blah. Then we have Spider Man, and uh, on the right we have the black suited Spider Man. I don't know quite why that's there, because this is the uh, normal Spider Man. Um, and then on the right we just have more of the uh, art, but this is magnetic, magnetic front. And there we have Spider Man in the packaging. Uh, Play Arts Kai, some of the accessories you can see there. And now on the left we have all of this. This is an imported figure, by the way, just so you know. Um, far reaching evils, blah blah blah. If you want to read that, go ahead and pause it here. If you want to read this, pause it here. So, yeah. I'm going to basically open this figure and uh, go over it, but so let's um, get right into it, I guess. Here's the tape on the back. Just cut that and pull that open. I am hoping to save this box, so I hope not to rip it in any way. Alright. And then pull out the plastic here. Woo! We have some accessories coming out. All right. So what all came out here? So this is the plastic piece that I guess was sitting back here with the stand and stuff, which does need some assembly. Quite a bit of assembly, actually. One of my pieces already uh, came out of the uh, plastic there. Uh, here's the uh, stand, which will involve some assemblies. And then here we have the actual Spider-Man figure, which also, um, you know, I'll take a look at. But for now, I'm going to assemble the case. The case? For now, I'm going to assemble the, uh, the stand using the uh, instructions that are in the back of the box here. There's some of the uh, directions for all that, and then for all of that. So yeah, after a significant amount of time of assembling this stand and the pieces that go along with it, um, you know these little claws here. Um, and trying to figure out how to read those not great instructions. We're finally to the actual figure itself to get out of its clamshell here. <laughs> Okay, so I've been playing with this figure for a little bit, and I have some complaints. I'm finding, as I use it, more and more things wrong with this figure. So I don't know if I was got gotten if I was given a bootleg, um, or if my figure just wasn't lucky. But here's some misuse. Um, the hands, all of the holes are too small. So I don't know if you can see a size difference there, but this is the one that fits and this is the one that doesn't. It's too small. So you have to put them on and off multiple times for anything to happen really. Um, right here, this part of the mold was tucked back when I got it. So every time I move the arm, it gets stuck and crashes into it, causing, I'm assuming, paint rub. Um, and the paint on this figure is kind of sloppy in parts. So here, you see that little black mark? And all around it, there's just little specks where they slightly missed. Now, I've watched other people's reviews, and they don't have this issue. So, I'm a little worried about that. But overall, it's pretty good. Um, 
really a lot of the paint does look great, but there are small mishaps kind of everywhere. Um, like a lot on the hands. Um, you can see here. There's no paint on the fingers. In there, in between. Little splotches of red paint. Every now and then on the fingers. In the wrong places on the black. Um, these web shooting hands have the most issues. So, as you can see, right there, there's paint rub. There's some of the sculpting is weird. There's, like, chunks of plastic on the, uh, on the finger. The fingers are bent really weird. So, you can see this one coming way down and this one going up. Similar on the other one. See, one going way down, and one going way up. Um, on the wrist, right there, you can see a bit of paint rub. Or not, not paint rub, but like paint in the wrong place. See it right there again on the uh, fingers. But it's all in very small places, which is why I'm going to give it a pass. Um, I mean, there's a little bit up here, but I think that's again because the sculpt was in the way. But I can fix most of that, um, not most of the paint, but most like the holes, like right there, I can fix that with uh, some heat. But yeah, but I do really like the figure. There is definitely a learning curve for the articulation and how to exactly um, articulate this guy into something that won't fall. Especially with this. This stand um, is not great. And I say that because of these claws specifically. So they're nice and tight, but as you use it, as you see right there, it becomes super loose. So then you have to tighten it again, which luckily it comes with a, uh, a little tool for that. And then you tighten it just to where you want it. Say I want it there, but I want to make an adjustment. So I make an adjustment. All right. But that's not quite right, he's leaning. So I move it again. And then now this whole thing is loose, and then I move it again, and now it's all loose. Now it just does that. Like, that's an issue. Um, a very bad issue uh, for these stands. And it's really obnoxious, because you have to keep tightening them over and over and over and over again if you want to pose your figure on the stand, which is what I did. That being said, this stand, I like how it works with this and this and this and in combination. But it's a very heavy figure, and it uh, is hard to balance on these claws. They don't tend to fit around the body very much either, so that's not great either. Um, but the stand will work. I think it's more of a learning curve. I have to learn how to use it. So let's actually go about the figure. Take him off the stand. Now let's start with uh, the accessories, I guess. So, the accessories are pretty great. Um, we have webbing, which you can attach stuff on the end to. Again, these didn't really fit either. Um, I had to work them in a little bit. So we have the webbing, which you can put in and out. You can swap this with uh, this webbing at the end here, like so. Or if you wanted to, swap it with even longer webbing like so. Then you have an extra long one. So those just plug in here with the little spurt coming out. And then you can attach a glob or this web here and everything will be great. Like I have this one glob coming out as if he just fired his web. So from there I guess we can go over articulation. And the articulation is very good but I do have a slight issue with mine. Again it's always something wrong, which kind of sucks. So I do possibly maybe have to reshoot this whole ending bit with uh, the articulation here. But I've become a bit better at the articulation at this point in time. And I can go over it a bit more so I can get more dynamic poses out of it now that I've learned really how to use it. So I will address some of the issues I had uh, and kind of still have with the figure in terms of articulation. But... Here we... Oh, look, there's one. Uh, but here we go. So, 
looking at the figure here, we have the head, so he can look up uh, a lot with the neck there, and down about that much. Then you have the neck, which makes him look down a lot more. Then we have the pivot, obviously. It's actually some pretty good pivot. Then we have the arms, so you can go out. Look at that, there's part of my problem there. Um, so you can go out about that much. If you get the bicep swivel there, so you can uh, really get the whole out arm, if you like that thing. Uh, you can go up very, very far with them, because it's on a ball joint. But if you want to move it out like this, basically what you have to do is use it at a 90 degree angle, completely f like flat to the body, and then move it out. Because these joints in here are really weird, and as you can see, I'm having I'm struggling with it right now. Um, they move very interestingly. Uh, you have to kind of put it all the way in first before you move it. So then you can actually see that move in there if you want to get that. Have them wave. Uh, that's beside the point. So then here at the arm, we have two swivels here and here can see. Um, and then this is my first problem. This arm tends to do this and bend weird, but whatever. Um, so you can get it to bend over 90 degrees. It's pretty sweet. Then here at the wrist, we have two points of swivel. We have uh, one here at the base of the hand and then one at the base of the forearm. And then we have the tilt and you can help, you know, help. You can move that uh, whichever way you want to get some more articulation out of the hands. So then here we have the uh, chest and mid area articulation. So this is where a uh, problem is that you just kind of have to deal with player at sky figures. So when you want to lean them forward, there tends to be this big back gap here. Um, if you want to get this really nice ab crunch. You have this back gap. So what you kind of have to do is push it back and then lean them down, because otherwise it'll just look like that, and that's not right. You don't want that. So you kind of have to push it back, make sure the sculpt is out of the way, which is rubbery for this reason, which is good. It's rubbery, so you don't have to deal with uh, you know stuff getting stuck. But there you go. You can bend it if you bend it back. You just have to deal with a little bit of gappage there, but you can work around that. Then, at the base here, um, we have a more ab crunch, so you can get a deeper ab crunch. Not Still not a whole lot, but you can get a deeper one. It's pretty nice. Um, what is that? Time to kill that, whatever it is. Anyway, so now we're towards the hips, and this is where my next problem is. And it has to do with this midsection right here, with this sculpt. So, if I don't move it to the right, these hips have a real problem. Specifically the right one, or left one on the screen. Um, he just really likes to pop out there. It's kind of obnoxious, not much I can do about it. Um, but yeah. So, the legs are very interesting compared to most Spider-Man figures. They can't go out very far, unless you bring them up first. In which case, then you can bring them out quite a bit. And you can get them to go out even more uh, if you move this part of the sculpt up here. Because it's directly affecting the legs. Which is why this leg will tend to pop out in there. That joint will kind of separate and come out. So, there's that. But you can kick back fairly far um, and kick forward. Oh, we're going to have a problem. See? Problem. Can't get it to go up. There we go. And it can go up about that much. So then we're at going down the calf to the... Uh, there's no calf rotation, no calf split, but right above the knee, this black rotates. Then we have double jointed knees. Very, very nice there. Um, it looks very good with this black and silver section. Makes it look a lot more seamless. Um... Very, very nice. And then we have the ankles here, which are a bit weird. Um, they go down 
very well, and they do have ankle pivot, and they swivel sometimes. They're very iffy on when they swivel, but they do swivel, I swear. Um, and then they have toe articulation here. So at that point, might as well take a look at some of the paint, even though you've already been seeing it, might as well point it out. So the head, very standard Spidey head. It's got some nice black and bright red detail. I really like it. Let me go down the neck. We have black, red, some nice shading in there. The spider logo, I really like the spider logo. You have some nice sculpting in there. The blue and red uh, going on. Then we have a nice soft piece here and here for articulation. Very, very nice. The red and blue contrast. Then we have the uh, the silvery black parts. Some people don't like these. I really, I really don't mind them at all. Um, paint rub or miss paint, miss miss paint, whatever. Some weird placement of paint there. Um, more black at the elbow for I guess armor, and then black here at the wrists. In there we have our little web shooters. You can see. But the paint looks really, really good on this guy. And here's the back, the spider. There's some spidey butt. It's a very nice sculpting going on in here. Um, then the legs. Some bright blue, some dark blue, black, silver. It's a lot going on. This figure looks really, really good in my opinion. I really, really like it. I don't. The thing I don't really like is the shoes. They should be definitely flat. These boots look weird. Spidey doesn't wear boots. Um. Yeah, he looks really, really good. I really like this figure. So, I guess that's where I'm at. How do I like this figure? I really, really like this figure. Um, I There are some slight issues, you know, with the, the articulation and some paint issues. Um, but I really like the rest of the paint otherwise. Besides the couple issues, I think the paint and sculpt are really great on this guy. I love this figure. And he was 60 bucks on Amazon. He's definitely worth it. Um, unless you're an enthusiast... And a collector, anything over that, over like 65, I think is getting a bit high. But he does come with all the accessories, you do have to remember that. And uh, he does look really good when you can get him in a nice pose. But there's a learning curve if you're you know, not an enthusiast and don't know Player It's Kai figures. And this is your first one like mine. Um, you definitely have to learn how to use the joints and not pull them out of the socket like I did over here. Um, and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, so that's really it with this Spidey figure. Go ahead and like if you liked it. Favorite the user favorite. Make sure the video subscribe for more. Tell me what you think about the figure in the comments below if you have it. Other player at Sky figures I should pick up. And yeah, I will see you all later. Take care.